Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this screencast in which I am going to demonstrate two things to you. Number one, how to find out the duration of a bond on an Excel sheet. And number two, what are the various factors that affect the duration. So let us assume uh, some data. Let us take up a bond which was issued on 1st of January 1990. Issue date, my friends, is also known as the settlement date. Basically, the settlement date is when the bond is made available for trading to the buyers. Then the bond is also supposed to mature on 1st of January 2010. That will give us 20 years to maturity. The coupon rate on the bond is 3% and the going market interest rate is 4%. The going market interest rate is also known as the yield. The bond also is making us annual coupon payments. So let us first of all see how to use the Excel functions to find out the duration of a bond. Let us do that in this cell. For that, I'm going to go to the formulas tab here and then I'm going to pick up the financial functions. I click on this one and I have this drop down menu from which I'm going to select this function duration and I get this type of a dialog box in which I need to enter my information. So the first field is about the settlement date. That is the date on which the bond is made available for buying to the investors. So let me write that date here. 1st of January 1990. Then the maturity date 1st of January 2010 then the coupon rate 3%, then the yield or the market interest rate 4% and in the frequency field I am going to write how many times the coupon payment is made in a year. So since the coupon payment is on an annual basis I am going to write 1. So once I do that I am going to click OK and the duration of a bond is returned to me here 14.909 years. So this 20 years bond has an effective maturity of 14.91 years. Now let us look at a few facts that can affect the duration of a bond. The first one is that the duration is directly related to the time remaining to maturity. Let us now uh, look at our result here for the duration. This is what we had entered. If we alter the time remaining to maturity, let us say rather than maturing in 2010, the bond matures in 2020 and let us see what happens to our duration keeping all other factors as constant or same. The duration of a bond you see has gone up from 14.91 years to 19.104 years. So that proves to us that as the time to maturity increases the duration of a bond also increases with it. That is both of them are directly related to each other. If for example, I reduce this uh, time to maturity, let us say it does not mature in 2020, but it matures in 2005 only. That means we are reducing the time to maturity and look what happens to the duration. It falls to 12.1 years. So duration of a bond therefore is directly related to the time remaining to maturity. Now let us go back to our original scenario. We had the bond maturing in 2010. Let us write that here and return back to our original result. And then let us look at the second fact. The duration of a bond is inversely related to the change in market interest rates. Let us see on our formula bar what happens when we change the values for market interest rates. The market interest rate at the moment we have entered a 4% value for it. Let us increase it to 6% and see what happens. 6 and let me delete this 4 and let's see duration has fallen from 14.91 years to 14.022 years. That is the duration of a bond is inversely related to the change in market interest rates. We changed our market interest rate from 4 to 6. That is, we increased it by 2% and in consequence, the duration of the bond reduced from 14.91 to 14.02 years. That is why we say that the duration of a bond is inversely related to 
the changes in market interest rates. The explanation for that is pretty simple. When the interest rates are higher, my friends, the cash payments in the future are discounted more heavily naturally because our discount rate is higher. So the cash payments, since they are discounted more heavily, they become less important in present value terms relative to the total present value of all the payments and that will cause the effective maturity of a bond to fall. Now let us look at the third fact but before going there let us uh, return back to our original scenario uh, to the 4% market interest rate here with 14.91 years remaining 14.91 um, years as the duration. Now the third fact says the higher the coupon rate lesser the duration of a bond. So let us make that change here to the coupon rate. At the moment we have assumed a coupon rate of uh, 3%. Let us make it um, 7% and let's see what happens to the duration of the bond. As you can see the duration of the bond has again fallen from 14.91 years to 12.708 years or 12.71 years thus verifying the fact that higher the coupon rate lesser the duration of a bond. We increased the coupon rate from 3 to 7 percent and in response the duration fell from 14.91 to 12.71 years and the explanation for that also is pretty simple. A higher coupon rate would mean that a um, relatively greater amount of the cash payment is made earlier in the life of the bond and so the effective maturity of the bond must fall. Now let us move over to the fourth fact that the duration of a zero coupon bond is simply its time to maturity. So we really don't need to calculate the duration of a zero coupon bond. It should be equal to 20 years. Let us verify that on the formula bar. Um, zero coupon. So let us make this coupon payment to 0% and let us see what happens to the duration. So if we change the coupon rate to 0%, the duration is 20 years which is the same as the original time to maturity for the bond. So the duration of a zero coupon bond therefore is its time to maturity. Thank you very much my friends. Bye bye.